Hello everyone, I'm Dave Hume, I'm a keys player from Cove Community Church um, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to run tracks um, on a Sunday um, going from kind of the easiest option um, with least control up to sort of more complicated ways but you're able to respond um, more to what the worship leader is doing kind of jump around between songs and um, between sections of songs. Um, so the first thing you're going to need to do is um, create a new set in Ableton. So we'll go up to the top here, click File, um, New Live Set. And this will just create a blank template. It might look a bit different to your blank template, but, but that's fine. Um, and then we need to get hold of some tracks. Um, if you're in Care of Community Church, I can give you access to a library of tracks that I've got, and then you can um, drag them in that way. Um, if not, you'll need to get them from multitracks.com. Um, what I tend to do with my tracks is to do um, two different versions. One version will have all the instruments that are on the track kind of merged down into a single file. Um, and the other option is that each instrument's kind of split out and to give you more uh, flexibility, which we'll show you later on. So for now, we're just going to use the um, single mix, mix down track. Um, so if I open here the tracks folder, we can see it's called the song title, the key, um, the BPM, and then the name. So in this case, track. Um, now, before we drag it in, we just want to go back to Ableton and make sure in Options, um, Preferences, on the Record, Warp and Launch tab that this option here, Auto Warp Long Samples, is set to off. Um, make sure that off that is off because if it's on, you could get some weird effects when dragging stuff in and um, with things speeding up and slowing down depending on when the BPM changes and stuff. So just make sure that's off. Cool. So we can go to our tracks folder and we can either just drag it in here onto Ableton onto a new space, um, or we could do it from Ableton on this left hand side uh, library page here. So we've got our track in and we can just um, click play on the right hand here on the master. And after a bar of counting, it'll just start the track. Turn it up a little bit. Oh, turn it up a little bit. You can hear it there. And if we turn the click on using this um, icon here, we can hear the click, but it's not quite right. Um, so if we look at the track name, we can see it says 140 BPM. So let's just update that. Set it to 140. I want to want to just stop it and start it again. And there we go. That sounds pretty good. Let's just turn up a bit. Cool, okay. So that's all working, but you would have heard that um, in our ears, it's um, they're both coming out the same channel, which would mean that if we're doing this on a Sunday, the congregation will be able to hear the click, which we don't want. So we need to map them um, to different outputs. So we can do that on this um, right pan pane here. So we can send the master to output one from this drop down and the cue, which is the click to output two. So if we play it again, if you're on headphones, you should be able to hear that on one side you've got the click and on the other side you've got the track playing. Okay, great. But the problem with this is we don't know um, when the track is actually starting because there's a two bar counting, but um, the, the other instrumentalists might not know that. Uh, the worship leader definitely won't. Um, so the way we can get uh, around this is to use a guide track as well. Two. So if we find um, the guide track for that song, and we just drag that to the right of the existing one, it'll create a new channel. And if we play that, one, two, we can now hear the guide. One, two, three, four. And that just kind of does a count in. Um, and we need to send this to the click channel as well, which is over here where we set it to two. So if on this um, guide channel, we on this audio out to section, we set this to external out, and we pick two. One, we can just two, change the volume two, a little bit. Three, four. And there we go. Verse. Okay, so that's great. That's all working um, fine. Um, the problem with this though is it doesn't give us much flexibility. The track will be just running from the start to the end. Um, and if the worship leader wants to jump around, maybe they miss the intro or they want to do the verse again or um, they want to repeat a bridge. We don't have the control to do that at the moment. So what we're going to do is create um, several copies of this one here um, onto different lines and name them the different parts of the song. So we'll just rename this top one first. So we'll call it Relove, the key, the BPM, and we'll call it Intro. Okay, and then we'll duplicate that. So to do that, we can either right click and click Duplicate or press Command, Control D. 
and then we can rename this to verse one. Okay. But obviously if we play this at the moment, it's just gonna start from the beginning. So how do we change that? Um, if we double click on the track here, we can see it's come up here. Now we could um, drag this across to try and start it at the right point. But obviously that's gonna be a bit tricky to make sure it lines up and everything. So what would be helpful is if we had um, bar numbers for us to set. So we can enable that by clicking the warp button. Um, we need to make sure that the BPM is correct before we do that, which it is at 140. So if we now click warp on that clip, you can see it's um, set it to, it's, given, it's basically given us these bar numbers. So now we can jump through um, and this song will start at different points. So let's listen to the track, warp the um, guide as well. If we one, start the track, two, we can listen one, two, three, for where four. that starts. Let's try and zoom in a bit. Verse. Okay, so the verse is starting at seven. So remember that. Pre -chorus. And the pre-chorus is starting at 23. Okay, great. So let's go and set these to start at seven for the verse. So in this start section, we can type in seven, press enter, and do the same thing for the track as well. So that was both of these ones here. So they're both now set to seven. So if we click on the master one for that scene, it'll both start at bar seven. And we can do the same thing for the pre-chorus. So we can uh, duplicate that again, uh, call it pre-chorus. So let's set that to 23. There we go. And the breakdown was at 31 as well. So we could do, do one more, call this breakdown. Start them at 31. Okay, cool. So now what we've got the flexibility to do is to jump around different parts of these songs. So we can start off with verse one. And then we could jump straight to the pre-chorus. and then to the breakdown. And then we could repeat this bit as well. And then we could go back to verse one. So now we've got the flexibility to jump around different parts of the song. And what I'd recommend doing is maybe setting a few of these for different key points in the song. So maybe for the verse, in case the intro sort of goes a bit wrong. Um, one for maybe the first chorus, um, if the verse goes a bit wrong, and there may be one for later in the song, like a bridge or something, or a final chorus that you might want to repeat um, or do again, something like that. Um, cool, so we've got that working. Um, if we then wanted to add another track, um, suppose we're doing only want to sing after that, we could drag in the guide, we could drag in the track into the next um, scene. We can call this only want to sing. Uh, I think this is at 130 BPM in A. One, two, and we'll one, get the same two, guide three, in, four. and then the song will start playing. Verse. Cool, so how would you control this um, on a Sunday? Um, well, if you've got a MIDI controller, um, that'd be great. You can um, assign buttons on the MIDI controller um, to trigger different scenes. Um, if you haven't, don't worry, you can use the keyboard on your computer. So what we want to do is, um, for these different scenes, um, set our keyboard to trigger them. So if we go to options and we click on edit key map um, for our computer keyboard or MIDI for a MIDI controller. So we go on edit key map and then we can just press um, keys on our keyboard and you'll see it will come up with what we're pressing it. So I'm just pressing the number keys here. Cool, so now that's set, I can just press One, two. the numbers on my keyboard. One. Two, one, two, three, four. And it'll just jump around the different sections of the song. Okay, so this is great. Um, this has given us the flexibility to jump around um, songs. Um, the only thing we haven't got really is uh, flexibility for the sound engineer. And we're sending all that track on a single channel, and um, which means that if we've got like a drum loop, um, we've got um, some keys, we've maybe got some extra guitars, and we've got that vocal effect on um, Real Love as well. 
they're all coming out the same channel, which doesn't give them much control over how, what it's sounding like, if they want to apply EQ or any effects to it. Um, so the way we can do this is to split um, our sound up into different channels, and that's what I was talking about um, earlier with the different options that I give you for tracks. Um, so for Real Love, we actually got the split up into different sections. So we've got a keys, a synth bass, a vox, um, effects and percussion. So let's just drag these onto a new one. We'll do another one um, down here. So I'll put the keys, let's put the keys onto that existing channel we've got there. Let's put the synth bass oh, on a new one. Uh, the vox onto another one. The FX onto another one and percussion. And we've got our guide again. So now if we play this, one, two, we should hear roughly one, the two, same three, thing. Four. I'll just merge these so you can, oh our BPM is incorrect isn't it? We can hear that so let's just change that here. One, two, one, two, three, four. So you can see they're kind of on different channels. Um, if we jumped in a bit through the song, we can got the percussion there. We've got, them. We've got the uh, synth bass over here. So what would be helpful probably is to send maybe the synth bass to one channel, the keys to another one, um, and then the um, like vocal effects and percussion to another channel. So we can do that on the from these channels on the external out option. So we'll leave the keys one. Let's just rename this to keys. Um, you can do that by right clicking, click and rename. Um, so that's going to the master. That's fine. Um, the guide, we've, we were setting that to two, Let's set that back to two. Um, and then on, this is the synth bass, um, we set it this to maybe three or four. Um, you'll need an interface that's got enough outputs um, to do this. Um, the most simple ones will only have two and then maybe four and eight. Um, if you have got an interface with enough outputs but you can't see them here, they may not be enabled. And to do that, just click on configure, go to output config, and then make sure they're enabled in this screen and then you'd be able to pick them. So I haven't got a, um, a big enough interface plugged in at the moment, um, but we could set these to different um, different channels. Let's just pick between uh, one and two. And let's put uh, that to one and that to two. So now if I play it again, one, two, uh, let's just skip one, a bit through the song. So we can hear that the different channels are coming to different, different sides, different channels. And we could do the same thing that we did before in terms of splitting it up into the different sections to start at different points in the song. Cool. Um, so that's basically um, how to run some tracks uh, with a click in Ableton. I hope that's um, been helpful. In the next one, um, I'll be showing you how to use um, ambient pads um, for the more uh, slower songs where you haven't got a track, along with um, um, some keys playing maybe. Um, cool. So thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.